So apart from oil, of course, Nigeria does have others, other resources to export, which you could do with Indonesia. Nigeria has about 44 different types of mineral resources in commercial quantities, which are found in over 500 locations in the 36 states of the country, as well as the federal capital territory, Abuja. In 2021, the National Bureau of Statistics said that Nigeria produced about 89 million tons of solid mineral resources. And uh, where are they? How much of it has gotten into the course of the government? I, I guess Mr. Dili Alaki will have a lot to do with that. But for this morning, let's look at it from the private sector's eye with uh, someone who is involved in exporting solid minerals and uh, other agro commodities. Uh, we have with us in our Abuja studio right there, Mr. Ibida Palawao, the founder and chief executive officer at Nivea Limited. Thank you so much uh, for your time, uh, Mr. Lawao. And good morning. So uh, uh, I know that you you deal more with export, or at least you you do handle the solid minerals also. So when you heard that Mr. Adelia Lake has been named the minister to handle that sector, what was your what were your first thoughts? Um, well, um, uh, looking at his uh, background, where he's coming from, and some of the things he has done. I think, uh, I believe that you'll be able to do uh, great in this industry. Uh, being uh, support, if it's actually supported by the government. Uh, so I, I, I look forward to um, some of the great initiatives it's going to bring forth in the, uh, to the sector. Yeah, well, in this case, he is the government, so we expect him to make things work. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, what about this issue of illegal mining? How bad or deep is it in the country, in the sector? So, actually, you have a lot of uh, the mining done still being artisanal, and you have a lot of, you know, like, uh, that's quietly uh, unregulated. Uh, we need to have the new minister bring in the informal sector uh, uh, into, to capture that into the mining uh, sector properly. So uh, by actually bringing these artisanal miners into the, uh, to the formal sector, that's going to help. Mm. But, well, I, I would have asked for the process, but let's stick to your area now. I know that you do more of the exports. Could, how, how do you get them? Because you, you just talked now that mostly it's done by artisans, um, of course, with crude equipment, which, of course, limits the quantity that should be. Uh, how do you get it? Do you work with them? Is there a middleman? How does it work, really? So, basically, um, what we do is we actually have buying centers in, about, uh, uh, in several states in Nigeria where we aggregate the minerals from. And um, some of those people, even though they actually still work, you know, uh, uh, manually or use, uh, I'll say, like uh, semi-mechanized equipment to mine this product, um, we aggregate from various centers and then, you know, uh, test these products before we export them out of the country. So that's how it works. You have, like, aggression centers in a Boeing. We also have in Joss Plateau State, um, you have in Nasarawa, Benue, and all those places where minerals are mined in Nigeria. Have a lot of, you have a lot of middlemen, you know, in between the miners before it even gets to export. Yes, that's correct. Um, because before we export, we need to have some of the processing done. So you have a lot of small processing centers, like in Joss, you have what they call tin sheds, where even though these artisanal miners, after they've mined the product, they have to take to these processing centers to concentrate the minerals, you know, hard value, before then they bring to our buying center in Plateau State, before we now aggregate, you know, into container loads and export. So you have different tin sheds. I don't know, maybe in Plateau State, there should probably be more than 50 tin sheds in Bauchi, the same. So that's, that's I have a lot of middlemen, you know, collecting from the artisanal miners that have buying centers, they process and then aggregate, uh, we aggregate and then we export to destination countries uh, in China or Malaysia, depending on the products. Help us understand what you mean by processing, because uh, a, lot of, a lot of Nigerians have the impression that our resources are exported raw, you know. So when you say processing, what is that? So typically, like, if you look at it, for, for instance, our number one product as a company is tin concentrates, right? 
when ten is mined directly from the ground, you think that the grade is probably less than maybe I don't know, maybe one percent. By the time they do some form of processing at the tin sheds, we move from like a hole that's the tin or from less than one percent to about six to five percent concentrates, which is what we export internationally to uh, one of the uh, largest smelters in the world. So it has to be value, uh, there has to be an upgrade of the of the ore. There has to be. They ask go to some uh, concentration. You, know, you use uh, machines like magnetic separators. They use air floats, you know, to improve the grade, and then before it meets the export requirement. But if you're just going to take the tin ore directly, one percent, you can't export that. So that's what I'm talking about. Where in terms of the upgrade. Okay, but um, we do know that when they get out of the country, then they're being turned into commodities that we re. re purchase into the country any hope of you know adding value to that extent you see it close by well um uh, these are some of the things we're exploring at the moment um like for where we think in the instead of actually exporting tin concentrates can we make the tin ingots here but you also think about it that this kind of this kind of projects actually require uh, you, you need a lot of capital to be able to do such uh, but as a company, um, we are also looking into, you know, manufacturing finished products. We have, um, so this is, these are some of the things we're currently exploring. And we have a, uh, an aluminum and uh, uh, copper recycling plant. We're doing something in Ogun State um, just to backward integrate. And that should project to come on stream next year uh, instead of just exporting, you know, just raw products only. So that, that, this is one of the things we're working on. Yeah, that would be very nice. We really look forward to that. But is capital the only huddle that you have, you know, adding value to these commodities before they are exported? Can you come again? I was asking, you mentioned capital, and I asked if capital is the only huddle to, you know, the value chain, adding value to these commodities before they are exported. Well, capital is not the only issue. Apart from, the, apart from that, you also have the technical expertise. You have, to, you have issues like the technology know-how. So if you don't have a competent hand to actually you know, uh, execute such projects, you're going to have, you're gonna have uh, problems. Like even for the project you're working on, we have to have bring in expert rates to lead the team. So out of maybe 12, 70 employees are working at that factory, when it's built, about 12 of them have to, uh, they are, are going to be expert rates because we don't have the local resource to be able to manage such projects. So even for most of the mining uh, uh, companies in Nigeria, you still see a lot of expert rates. Either go to a gold mine, maybe in Quara, that is owned by a friend, you have, it's, you have expert rates working there, majorly Chinese. You also see, uh, like, in different areas, maybe it's, led, you know, so you have the, 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 you have the technical know-how, you have the capital, you have, like, other things, like, you know, FX instability, you have, like, the other, other things, like port congestion, and there, there are so many other factors that you have to actually uh, deal with when it comes to, you know, uh, um, setting up a, a proper factory that you can add value, not just capital. So the issue of skills uh, actually catches my attention. Is it because we do not have lecturers or technical schools that can transfer those skills to the youth or what? Well, you know that um, I, I, we're not going to say just because we don't have lecturers. Like, some of these things are new or they're going to be, like, in Nigeria. So maybe there is going to be first time or you don't even have the... So, so like, you want to set up, like, like tin concentrates now. The smelting technology, so you have, like, some people use ISA smelt or some of these things. There is nothing like that in Nigeria. The technology is also expensive. So when you have to set up, you also have to, you know, get the technology from outside the country, bring people that have the technical know-how that have done it before, because it's a huge investment. It probably put in set up a tin smelter, you're probably gonna invest about fifty to hundred million dollars, depending on the capacity. So you don't want to take such a risk without having adequate hands to manage it. But with time you have the technology, you have the the, the knowledge transfer of, from foreigners to the locals, and with time, you know, the locals will be able to execute or run these factories uh, without any issues. So it's just something that gradually we get started and then from there we can move. Yeah, but I mean, we've been saying that for many years. Let's bring the uh, technocrats and then they'll pass on the skills. But it doesn't feel like we're really having that result, that expected result, because if we were having that by now, we should have our own local skills who should be able to handle these issues. I think uh, it's... Uh a gradual process, and I believe that with time we'll get there. 
You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. But I think gradually, as we keep improving, we're going, we're going to get there. All right, if we were to set an agenda for the minister, uh, Mr. Adili Alake, uh, just as he's uh, jumping into office now, where would you expect him to look at first? What would you expect him to handle as the first you know, steps in, in office? So uh, I think that coming in uh, into the country, it's very important to, uh, I would say, like, number one, try to see how to promote Nigeria as an investment destination. If you think about it, um, you see that a lot of uh, mining in Nigeria is really nothing, not contributing anything to the GDP, and not as much as possible, I mean, uh, apart from the oil. So this needs to be done. We have to showcase, you know, uh, the products and minerals we have. We have to encourage investment in this sector, and that would also help the country, you know, with the recent issues we've had with the FX challenges, because there'll be, you know, there'll be foreign exchange earnings from this project. So I expect the minister to do that. And also, the second thing I expect him to do is to encourage import substitution for some of the products that are currently being imported into the country that can be mined locally, you know, like bayrite, like some iron ore, things that, you know, the, uh, the oil and gas industry use. So they have to, uh, I think there's some policies in place already to uh, discourage importation of this product, but we also have to encourage import substitution. This would reduce the pressure on the FX demand for, for this product, you know, and also help create direct and indirect employment. While we're also, and in addition, the government can actually, you know, get revenue as we are, and then also help diversify our portfolio and not really concentrate on just earning from crude oil. So oh. these are so, uh, some of the th uh, things I expect him to really focus on. All right. coming. And lastly, you should actually try to see how to bring in the informal sector to the, to the, uh, to the formal sector, capture that, uh, uh, capture that uh, sector of the, uh, of the industry so you know, that the government can generate, re generate revenue and try to see how we can grow that industry. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ibidako Lawal, the Chief Executive Officer at Nivea Limited. Uh, we do hope Mr. Delalake is listening and he will put this into his to-do list in, the, in recent time. But thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Thank you.